would you do reality TV again? Or Woo! is your life too boring at this point? Do you think that it would make sense? It has nothing to do with my life because my life was never really on reality TV. Okay. Um, yeah. You're kind of like signing up to have a bunch of exciting storylines, even if they're not really yeah, related I'm to your real not, life. I'm just not there in life. Um, mm -hmm. What I told Sharp, the only show I'll be interested in doing is Real Housewives. But even with that, I don't want my real family on TV. I just mm -hmm. don't. Um, after, you know, being exposed to what I've been exposed to and seeing how it changes people and seeing, you know, how, what a tough skin you have to have. Um, just because people are so judgmental while they're sitting on their floor on their air mattress, you know, eating a can of sardines. They want to judge people that are in a position that they can never be in. I don't ever want my child or, you know, someone in my mother, my spouse, or whoever the case may be, to be like, I didn't sign up for this. Why are they saying these things about me? Mm -hmm. You know, when I first got on Love and Hip Hop, with the first four, the first three weeks, I was mortified. I'm like, why would they think this? Why would they say this? And people are nasty and evil. And they just like, like, you got to have a tough skin. Like, you, if you don't have a tough you would be suicidal reading some of this just grotesque, disgusting despicable things that people say about someone they'll never meet. And for me, it's like, I can handle it, but I can handle like, it. Like to put my kid in that position Absolutely. feels fucked up. Yeah. Uh, the, I remember the fourth week that I was on Love and Hip Hop when those offers started coming in, the hosting gigs and the this and the that and the amount that I'm like, oh, say what you want, say what you want, you know, but my mom can't handle that. Mm -hmm. My mom, my mom to this day, like I, mom, turn my notifications off. Like, because if someone comes at you crazy for you trying to defend me, I'm going to look up their IP address and then we all going to be messed up, you know? And right. then like, so I, I just don't want to involve my family in that type of thing. So the rea everybody, oh, you need your own reality show. I don't want it. I don't want it. Yeah. Like me and my girl did the family vlog type stuff a little bit for a while and everything. But you can control that. Yeah. But then it's still like at a certain point, it's like, okay. Why am I doing this? Like doing this, like taking your Sunday, hanging out with your family and also making it partially about like setting the camera up and filming a bunch of shit. If you don't have to do it to me, it's right. just, I would rather not do right. it and have right. my days with the family just be based on just having right. fun. You right. Know? Yeah. I respect people who kind of have to yeah. basically like whore out their family life in order to make money. I, I, I understand that, you know, if I was in that position and I didn't have anything else going on, I'd probably be doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't have to do it. So yeah. I'm just not going to do it. You know, my daughter, she loves making little YouTube videos and, and she just does it on her own. Right. And I just made her YouTube channel two weeks ago. I don't know if it's, if it's been this case for this year, but um, like there was two consistent years where the, the highest paid YouTuber was this little boy named Ryan. Yeah, yeah. Like he's a Nickelodeon get, kid. He's getting too old, so they made a cartoon version of oh, it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, kind of like JoJo, right? Is that yeah, yeah, because she's like 16 or 17 yeah, she, no, or she's something. she's like 19 now, I think. Really, yeah, because she was like a little kid YouTuber, yeah. and now she yeah. can't really. Yeah. And, and yeah. she's like a lesbian. She's like, yeah, got her she whole just, little thing. It was thing. a whole yeah. wild card. <laughs> I wonder what happened to, well, yeah, I wonder what happened to her channel, like if she still has. I'm pretty sure she does. It's probably still just her yeah. personality. Yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure she does. But, you know, so it's like there's a lot of money on the table, obviously. But, yeah. you know, I've never been, I'm just now getting into, you know, YouTube and posting videos and stuff, and people have been asking me to do it for years, like, um, I have a cooking show called because Kalisha's, Kick with Kalisha's the Kitchen. With the TV stuff, it was kind of like you just couldn't really like find it within yourself to like do all that work yourself with setting the camera. Yeah, like who the hell wants to do that? Right, you I kinda, get it done for me. Yeah, editing. Uh, but like then, like the thing that the thing that I realized that I'm missing off when I go on YouTube and Google like, oh, Kari wants to see a birthday party before I can even type the full name, a million videos pop up. Yeah, and people, t it's just aggravates me they take clips from my live clips from my story clip and they're monetizing this yeah and it's like oh god okay like it's almost like well if i don't do it obviously everybody else is right so yeah, it's a catch-22 you know yeah. we, th that's the era we live in so it is what it is definitely um okay so yeah what else you got coming up what are you excited about well again um as soon as there's this SAG strike is over. Right. I have movie and four shows that I've written, produced, and two of the shows I'm in, two of the shows I'm not. Um, I have a huge, huge announcement to make again when strike is, is, is over. Um, I've partnered with some amazing people for a particular show that I'm just, I'm super excited about. So maybe when the strike's over, I'll come back to drop that 
bomb here. Oh, okay. Um, but again, be looking out for my single narcissist, please. It's coming next. I I I just feel like it's it colors so many relationships of so many friends and people that I know. I think it's just gonna be super relatable. Uh, we're working on the visuals for that now. That's dropping in four weeks. Can't wait for that. Mm -hmm. And then um, my next book, Options Trading Tips from a Bad Bitch, is coming. That's dropping Black Friday. And then I also have my book for children, uh, Financial Literacy Tips for Good Kids. Mm. So we're doing like a whole financial literacy thing. And we want to start it early. Like your first time learning about bills and debt and credit and all these things should not be when you're in the real world. You know, I feel like, Western education teaches you to be a worker, mm. not to be um, entrepreneur, not to be successful. I really, truly think that the higher ups are the agenda is to get rid of the middle class altogether. I think they want it to be the super rich and the super poor. Mm -hmm. That gives more control. Um, you know, so I just I'm, I'm I'm so, you know, proactive about just constantly educating. I wish I learned earlier what I know now. I would be so far ahead. And, you know, thank God I've been able to you know, make quite a bit in a small period of time with the investing and, and things like that, you know, that I've learned to where, you know, I'm able to take the jobs I want to now. And whereas before it was like, oh, I got to get this job. I got to get this job. And I was like, mm, I don't need it. Mm -hmm. I can turn it down. Right. I take the jobs I want, not the ones, you know, the lights are going to be on. Definitely. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm excited about that. Oh, and, um, oh, just this just in. Um, Adam just offered me my own podcast, so that's coming soon. Well, <laughs> I was going to say, you did mention that. Is that something that you're kind of like looking at getting into? Well, like here's the thing. thing. So but right before COVID hit, me and Moniz, um, who was also on Love and Hip Hop with me, we started our own podcast. Mm -hmm. And this was before the whole big podcast era. But then COVID hit and we the studio shut down that we were filming in. and We couldn't get any of the editors. We filmed like two or three episodes and it was just kind of you know, the world was closed. Mm -hmm. So it was something that, that we had taken from this idea we created when we were on VH1 and they created this segment called Messiness and Mimosas. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's on VH1 on YouTube. You can Google it. We were the first to do it. And then they had other cast members do it, you know, years to come. I don't know if they still do it now or not, but we had created a show called the Clapback Recap. And um, again, like COVID kind of shut us down. Um, then I had pitched it at NBC Universal. They loved it. They were picking it up, but we did not have our releases from Love and Hip Hop. Mm -hmm. And that's actually how I got out of my contract. I didn't know that I needed one. Really? And it, it was a hard fight, but I got out of it. It was a hard, hard fight. It took years. Um, so anyway, cut to I have my daughter and I'm like, I'm going to be home more. My husband buys all this podcast equipment and, you know, I just kind of start recording. But then, like, I, I don't know. It's just, it just, it, it was just... I'm, I'm at my house with my daughter. I don't want to have guests come into my house and oh, I yeah. don't want to leave. So, you know, but I've had a million people ask me like, we need a podcast. Can you give us a podcast? Please give a podcast. I've had some, you know, pretty big people reach out to me about hosting a podcast. But what I will tell you after that sharp interview now, it's like, girl, you have to do one. You have to do one. You have to do one. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw like the comments and stuff like that, but I mean, I get comments every day about everything, but I can honestly say this is probably that had a nerve. Oh man. <sighs> Like I, I've, I've never seen so much love support from people. Like usually people try to find anything wrong with what I say. Mm -hmm. It was, it was just nothing but like positivity. It's funny. As soon as you mentioned the idea of doing something with no jumper, because you know how Joe Budden has had Melissa Ford on his podcast. So what's going on with that? Well, I'm not sure exactly like where it's at because uh -huh. I've heard there's a little bit of turmoil and yeah. everything, but it does occur to me that that would like to the people that would be like, oh, Joe got a, a legendary video vixen. So Adam goes and gets his own. Look at that. <laughs> Which, hey, I mean, not the worst idea I ever heard. I mean, I don't, I, I can think of a lot worse. I mean, yeah, but uh, okay. The whole thing, my perspective on podcasts is because I've, I've done the thing where I've had, I've just like got somebody who, there was this guy, Long Beach Griffey, and we gave you him You just a got pod. anybody like Sharp? Well, oh, okay, Sharp. I'm just seeing In the that. streets. <laughs> uh, but see. Sharp already had a reputation because he came on the podcast and it did crazy numbers. Just, I don't have a problem with Sharp. I'm just teasing, right, by okay. the way. But uh, <laughs> so when I, like I've done the thing, there was this guy, Long Beach Griffey. I gave him a podcast. He's got millions of subscribers. Never done a podcast though. Mm. Gave him a podcast on here and it was just like him and his friends kicking it. And it didn't feel like the fans really got mm -hmm. into it because it's like, this is no jumper. If there's going to be somebody on the channel, they kind of have to like make sense 
in regards to me, I yeah. think, where it's like, and I think it's it's like that on a lot of different podcasts or networks or whatever, where it's like, if they're going to really like care about somebody, like the best things that we've had going on as a channel is basically when we have a bunch of people that it actually feels like friends and they mm. actually have like real relationships and like, you know, there's ups and downs in those relationships where they can come on camera and kind of talk about it. But I don't know. That, that would be kind of the crazy thing because I'm just thinking about all our hosts and I'm like, oh, well, we already know how the Sharp and Masika dynamic works out. But I wonder how that could go. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. How much do you know about drill music? I mean, I know a little bit. <laughs> I know a little bit about drill, a lot of bit about Mickey Mouse. Yeah. But I, <laughs> I don't feel like you have to know that much about like the music as long as you're kind of willing to like tap in. Oh, yeah. I mean, like I said, I'm I'm off the scene and on the scene at the same time. Mm. It's a, it's a... It's hard to kind of like, like I said, I, I I can tell you the latest cartoon that's popping, but no, okay. I also I also got my ears to <laughs> that straight. Daniel Tiger be going <laughs> right, crazy, right, son. Right, period. <laughs> I need everybody to check out NoJumber.com. We officially started a blog. It has in-depth articles about current events, music, etc. Plus all of our content in terms of podcasts, interviews, etc. And you can get some exclusive new merch if you check out NoJumber.com. So make sure you tap in.